Hey, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascendant. This is Chris in Pennsylvania, and my guest today is Ryan Reese from the Rugby Atlanta, Rugby ATL side. And first off, right out of the gate, let me just uh, say this. Congratulations on your selection as an Eagle. Uh, Gary Go put you on a squad. You also made the traveling squad. So you're headed to Twickenham and to Aviva Stadiums coming up here very shortly. Are you excited about that? Yeah, super stoked. Um, and thank you for uh, congratulations. Um, but yeah, like, obviously just super excited uh, to get over there, especially for like first cap to be playing against, you know, with some of the top five ranked teams in the world. So yeah, super happy about that. Well, England at Twickenham, I mean, there's only three meccas of rugby. That's one of them, Ellis park. And then, um, and then Eden, Eden place or Eden in, in, in New Zealand, New Zealand, South Africa, England, but maybe you could say millennium in, in Wales, but uh, definitely Twickenham is the Mecca of rugby and you're going to get to play there. That that's gotta be that you got to be stoked. Super stoked. And uh, what's even better about it is that um, most of my dad's family still lives in London um, currently. So uh, if I do get a chance to play or see the field, this will be the first time that really any of them have ever seen me um, in person play rugby or any sport for that matter. Um, so I'm super happy about that as well. Well, that's crazy. I didn't realize you had family in England. That's interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. My dad is Welsh. Well, he's born in Wales and then grew up in London. So all of his family is in London. So it would only be a short train ride uh, over to Twickenham uh, to see the game. So, um, yeah, that's probably what I'm most excited for um, is just getting to see them there. That's pretty cool. Be, would be pretty cool, I should say. You know, um, a lot of guys had to move to Atlanta or had to become familiar with Atlanta or at least Marietta, Georgia, which is where Rugby ATL mm -hmm. plays out on Lupo Field there at Life University. But um, you kind of have an inside insight into that. Uh, didn't you play at Life? <laughs> yeah, I played at Life uh, for the – I played three full seasons there. And then my uh, final season uh, obviously was cut short uh, due to COVID. So that was a bummer. But, yeah, it was uh, – I mean, it was a super awesome experience to play at Life. Um, uh, as far as U.S. rugby goes for college, that's about as good of an experience as you can get. Um, I just remember coming out of high school, I was still super raw, barely played rugby that much, um, didn't really know how to pass that well. I, I could pass on my right, but um, just working with the older guys, especially the foreign players that, um, that often go to school there, it was just a huge help and really helped kind of accelerate um, my development as a player. Um, so I give a lot of credit just to go into life, um, for being able to, um, kind of develop my skills a lot more than the average American rugby player would. Well, when it comes to sevens, life is a juggernaut. You've got life, Kutztown, you've got Cal Bears. That's some of the big names out there. Definitely life is, uh, and if at the collegiate rugby championships every year that they were used to hold in Philadelphia, that was in New Orleans this year at the gold mine. But uh, when they did it in Philadelphia, the life crowd was huge and they were loud and, um, the men and women, uh, Definitely put on a good program, and and it was great to watch life play. That sevens program is really well run there, and I, I imagine you had a good experience with it. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, coach Colton's the uh, Carriaga has been the head coach of the seven since before he was the um, 15s coach, and like he's just a he's just a really good coach when it comes to well 15s and sevens specifically. Um, he knows what he's doing there, so. Um, that's probably like you saw the success they had this year. A lot of that is due to the um, the coaching aspect of it. And then just the young, talented players as well. So. Well, a little bit of bad news for the Eagles here. We see that with the sales sharks over the weekend that uh, AJ McGinty went down at fly half. Uh, of course he's a captain for the Eagles. So I don't know who uh, Gary's going to pick as a captain. I would guess maybe Cam Dolan might be the choice, but um, not to put a bummer on the Eagles uh, Eagles trip to, to the UK and to Ireland, but um, even with the loss of AJ McGinty, this is a very strong team in no small measure, I would argue, because you guys are playing together and against each other. Uh, a lot of the talent that's on the two thirds, of the talent that's been chosen for this squad comes from Major League Rugby. So you know what to expect. And you've, you've had lots of tests on your or not tests, but lots of appearances under your belt. So I'm thinking that uh, that the team, despite the loss, of AJ McGinty is still going to look pretty strong. Uh, it's a tall order to take on England and Ireland, but but I'm sure you guys are up for it. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone's just super excited to uh, kind of see the progress. Uh, like, I think everyone around the world, honestly, is excited to see what the progress um, that the MLR has made for the U.S. national setup. And then obviously losing AJ, that's that sucks. Um, I mean, I don't I don't know 
I don't think it's been disclosed the full um, like specifics of the injury, but um, it didn't look good. And it's just sucks not having AJ, but I think everyone's still super excited and is going to be chomping at the bit to get after these guys. Absolutely. No doubt about it. So you're playing on a, on a, on a side down there in Atlanta, which is pretty interesting. You're an American and you've got, uh, you've got uh, Kiwis, you've got Canadians, you've got South Africans all over the place. It's a very cosmopolitan squad with players who come with very different rugby experiences. Has that helped you improve your game in any way playing down there in Atlanta? Yeah, definitely. Like I alluded it to it earlier at life with the foreign guys, especially um, like the Irish guys, AJ being one of them. Uh, that was at life that would help kind of develop our skills. But yeah, definitely playing with um, these, you know, these professional, these guys who've been playing professionally in their country in the Curry Cup, the Mitre 10 and whatnot. Um, just being able to play around them and see how they, um, you know, kind of hone their skills in after practice and whatnot. Um, it's been a super big help. So, uh, and then it's, it's also interesting with like all the different nationalities you can kind of see the different identity, like the rugby identities for like South Africa and New Zealand, kind of um, how they think about rugby and, uh, you know, their mindset and approach to the game. And it's interesting to see how they mesh and uh, create one, um, you know, amalgamation of, uh, you know, the different sort of rugby identities. So it's interesting. So at Life, um, of course, that's a school that does a lot of medical stuff. What were you studying there? What did you, what did you get your degree in? Uh, so I'm, I'm still working on my first degree. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> long, arduous process, but uh, I'm uh, currently in the exercise science program, and I only have a few more classes to take. It's just hard to um, sort of when you get to the end of your degree, it's kind of hard to find which classes are being offered at the right time. So. Um, Really, that's been the only uh, hurdle towards the end of getting my degree is kind of just finding when the classes are offered and scheduling them around rugby and whatnot. Well, I'm sure that the COVID didn't help that situation at all with all the the pandemic stuff going on. No, it didn't. So like we were we were like most uh, other universities. We went to online for a couple of quarters, but um, it's pretty much all back uh, to in person <laughs> classes now. Um, I'm currently taking this quarter off because of what I said before they weren't offering classes for this quarter, but I actually found that um, I think it's helped um, kind of take up, take the school off my plate so I can focus on rugby focus on the season while we're in the meat of the season. Um, So it's been actually unforeseen, but it was helpful. uh, I think so. Now you're from Austin, Texas. I understand. Yeah. So are you a fan of Austin City Limits? <laughs> okay, totally, yeah. Uh, my parents would take me to Austin City Limits when I was like six or seven years old when there was hardly anybody um, at the park. And uh, me and my brother and my brother's friend would just like basically run amok with a football or a frisbee and just get into any sort of trouble we could find. Um, so, yeah, that was really fun. Um, are you going this year? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. That's just, I'm just asking. I'm, 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 I'm not really a fan, but I've, I've sort of, sort of from a distance, but uh, the question, so, so you're from Austin. Would you want to, at some chance, maybe go back and play uh, in, in Texas for one of the Texas squads? Uh, I mean, that would be cool. I was, I did, I missed the first um, MLR draft, kind of the one that was, that was televised. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they had a supplementary draft later on for the people that missed out on that draft. And uh, that's the one that I got, uh, that I entered. And I was drafted by Nola Gold, actually. And then um, just with kind of obviously doing, still doing my school here in Atlanta, it just worked out um, uh, that I would, it would be a better fit to play for Atlanta. And, um, you know, Ryan Fitzgerald and the staff at Nola were super accommodating and I couldn't be more um, grateful for them working with me to uh, help me play here in Atlanta so that I can uh, um, finish out my degree here. Well, that's great to to get a chance to finish it out. That works out really well. So um, I hope that you're able to get the courses scheduled sometime since you can knock that out because that'd be a nice achievement to add that to your, to your CV. Nice thing. Mm -hmm. So this past week, tough game, rugby United up there at uh, St. John's on long Island. 
uh, during the game, there was a bit of a head knock. Um, it looked like you were trying to beat Mark O'Keefe up there with your head. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, I was pretty rough looking and watching the rest of the game there. It looked like you were a blood donor there. There's a lot of blood coming off that head wound. How is the head wound? Are you okay? And um, you think you'll be back in the mix anytime soon? Yeah, everything's fine. Um, just uh, it, the blood probably made it look worse than it was. The cut isn't too big on my head. Uh, but just for safety precautions, they put seven staples in it um, after the game. So that's kind of been the biggest pain in the uh, pain in the butt um, is just dealing with the staples in my head because I often forget they're there and I'll just like run my fingers through my hair and kind of <laughs> yank on a <laughs> Sorry, don't want to paint uh, too vivid of a picture. But yeah, um, it can be uncomfortable at times. But I, I mean, I believe. I'm fit for uh, selection this week. It just depends on um, whether I make the 23 or not if I play. Well, good luck on that. Let's hope that you're able to, to make it back on the pitch because you're an exciting guy to watch on the pitch. We've enjoyed watching you so far this season. And um, also when you're playing with life, it's uh, pretty exciting to see you out there. Do you have a preference? And now that's not fair because you're playing for Rugby Atlanta right now and, and, and people are earning paychecks. But but uh, is it fair to ask you if you have a preference playing seven? I mean, if you're playing for recreation, if you're not playing for work, would, would you prefer to play 15s or 7s? Is one more exciting than the other? Or are they just both bring great aspects that you enjoy? Yeah, I mean, if gun to my head, I'd say 15s. Um just because there's kind of a lot more of a tactical side to it, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, but sevens, I mean, it's kind of like when you're at, you're at the end of your 15 season, all you're looking forward to is playing sevens. And then when you're at the end of your sevens, <laughs> season, you're looking forward to playing 15s. Um, but yeah, I would say 15s. It's just, you know, it's kind of like the proper uh, sport, you know, of rugby. And I like it. So. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Well, Ryan, it's, it's good to see that, uh, that you're, uh, you're healthy and um, that the uh, Frankenstein staples haven't, haven't diminished your spirit because you're still into the game. And uh, I'm going to wish you a, a good rest of the season. Hope you guys do well, but more importantly uh, for the immediate thing is that this te- or the summer test, that's going to be awesome. Uh, you're uncapped. This will be your first chance yeah. at a cap. Uh, that's got to be exciting that first time out. Um, make sure you save some souvenirs, whatever is they give to you, whether they actually give you a genuine cap or or whatever it is from this first one, because that first first test cap is going to be something you never forget. Oh, yeah, totally. Cool beans. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan Reese. Yeah. I appreciate your time today, and best of luck uh, the rest of the season this weekend and with the Eagles. We'll be looking forward to uh, seeing you on the pitch out there, uh, minus staples uh, for Rugby Atlanta and for the Eagles. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Thank you, Chris.